So now that we know what the GK is really good at, especially with this more hybrid build, I need to talk about the weaknesses of the ship and how you can deal with them. And we all know that German dispersion is a problem. Even with the upgraded dispersion you get with the module, it's nothing to write home about. So you really do need to get into those closer range engagements. So on a map like this, like Hotspot, especially if you spawn middle like I did, you're gonna need to use islands to get closer. And this is why we're running at least one of the concealment upgrades. We're trying to stay as dark as we possibly can, unlit, unspotted, so that we can get towards the cap, get into closer ranges, without taking cross maps from a Yamato at 26 kilometers, who's gonna do around 15,000 damage to us. <laughs> That is one of the big weaknesses of the Kerr First, is also the armor at long range. The Turtleback is awesome at close range, and you'll see more of that in this video, but it's really bad at long range, and you can easily Citadel Kerr First outside, I would say 19 or 20 kilometers. I've done it myself quite a few times, especially in Yamatos, and that's who's shooting at us again. So we're trying to mitigate the damage that comes in, by using our rudder shift, and that's why I'm also using the rudder mod like we saw last video at the end. With the build I'm running, rudder devs does help you deal with some of this more long range shots because your rudder is actually pretty good. Even if your turning radius is not amazing, um, your rudder is reasonably fast and it can allow you to dodge some of the incoming fire as we take out that Stalingrad who just kind of pushed in. I don't really know what his plan was, but we're trying to get closer to this island, preferably the one in EF2-ish area, right? This big island on the left-hand side. And sometimes you do have to disengage a little bit as well. We're not just going straight there, we're turning, we're maneuvering. We're even kiting away to the back of the map until we get unspotted, so then we can turn back in again. It is a difficult thing to pick your time to push in. And we'll talk about that in the next video, but really I just want to show you the islands that I'm kind of looking for. I'm looking for islands that are big, that can block shots, as well as vision. If you go for an island that only blocks vision, well, you can get plane spotted. Somebody in a destroyer can flank and spot you that way. And then it's essentially like that island doesn't exist because it's not blocking shells. So big, tall islands are the islands you're going to want to look for. Curve first can do all right if you go bow in on these islands, but more often than not, you're looking to play the islands in such a way that you're shooting over the edge of them, across the map, that kind of thing with all your guns, because the turret angles are horrible, the rear turret angles especially. If you can get yourself into a position for it, try kiting away at some of these islands, angling yourself away, nose away from the enemy, and the front turrets can look backwards at around 30 degrees, 35-ish degrees. And that's much nicer than the 45 degrees that the rear turrets get looking forward. To deal with this, of course, you do have to be patient with those rear guns. And this is also where the rudder shift helps us out. You want to wait until somebody shoots you with, you know, larger caliber guns like battleships. You wait, you stay angled until they shoot you, and then in the time that they're reloading, you swing out with your rear guns and get your rear guns off. And that is... One of the reasons that I like rudder shift as well on the curve first, because you show so much broadside every time you shoot your rear guns that anybody can get huge hits on you. Again, showcasing the strength of the <laughs> guns on this ship, even though they're seemingly some of the worst tier 10 battleship guns from overmatch to reload to alpha damage to penetration values. It's not amazing, but we can still sit at all a Kremlin at 16 kilometers. That shows you how powerful it is. So don't underestimate these guns at all. But at this point, we're five minutes into the game. It's taken us a long time, but we're getting close to our engagement zone, our area of the map that we want to play in. Islands like this are really good. People, if they want to push you out of these areas, they essentially have to come around the island and fight you in a brawl. And of course, that's where the curve first is really strong. So we've dealt with the weakness of the poor range and long range dispersion of the curve first by staying dark, maneuvering, picking our time to move up to an island well. You'll notice one of the biggest things I wanted to do to get to this island was to come at it straight on. You see how we're pointing straight at the island and anybody who would be shooting at me from behind these islands, if I was spotted, which I'm not, would be shooting at an angled ship. If I could have cut directly across from where I spawned south of sea, 
I would have been giving full flat broadside as I crossed in front of the A cap, and I likely would have taken a ton of damage. That was another reason that we were maneuvering so much and cutting across farther south before heading up towards this island. You really do want to stay angled as you're approaching these islands, because the most dangerous times are when you are getting to these islands. You're getting to pretty close ranges of the enemy team, and while you're on your way to an island, you don't have the cover of that island. So at this point, we've got a pretty decent position here, uh, but unfortunately our team has entirely melted on the other side of the map. So this one is gonna end up in a pretty easy loss, and uh, there's really not much we can do about it. And that's something else you gotta understand with the curve first is you don't have a lot of battle impact. Battleships in general have a tough time impacting the battle, and especially ones that take time to get into a good position for them, well, the game can just be decided in the first five minutes. So you have to deal with that, and we're going to try and do our best to collect some damage on the way out and make it as difficult as possible for this enemy team. But uh, there is no way to win this one. Now, I don't really like the way I've positioned myself in this one because, well, we're going to be showing a lot of broadside to this Kremlin. I was a little surprised that my secondaries weren't shooting over this island. I thought for sure they could get over since they have worse shell velocity and arcs than my main guns, but for whatever reason they weren't, so that is another thing that's a little bit frustrating to deal with with these secondaries. Um, but of course, like I mentioned in the last video, the secondaries have really, really good firing arcs, so in these closer range situations, a better way to play than I'm doing here is to only shoot your front guns and angle yourself just enough to get all of your secondaries off on people. That's a really, really strong way to play the curve first, you don't quite become as tanky as Kremlin um, because you're a big superstructure, but you're close to as tanky as a Kremlin, and as an added bonus, you get this extra firepower of the secondaries. I should be healing here a little bit sooner. It's another thing you can do is pop your heal a little bit early if you know you're going to take some pain, take some damage. That'll get you to your next heal a little bit quicker. Broadside minutes are at close range. That's got to be a dev strike, and it is, but not guaranteed all the time. So. We pull forward, I really wish I had done a little better job of angling, but to get that dev strike, I really did need those rear turrets. So we're gonna be broadside again to this Kremlin, and there's a Wooster coming around the other side. So in this kind of situation, I'm guessing, I'm hoping this Kremlin is gonna shoot the Wooster, and it's gonna give me an opportunity to reverse and turn so that I can get angled to this enemy Wooster as he comes around on my right-hand side. But it looks like the Kremlin's going for a ram, and he gets his front guns off on me and crushes me. <laughs> and in fact, I think he citadeled me. That's that sound you hear, right? So I guess Kerr first turtleback isn't completely perfect. You can see this Wooster is a pretty good player. He knows to shoot AP into my side. It's going to give him the most possible DPM. So we do need to angle to him as quickly as we possibly can. And at this point, it's pretty much over. We are running fire prevention, of course. And I damage con the first fire because we're dead here anyway, mate. We may as well try and RNG our way into not being on fire, right? But fire prevention is crucial to mitigating all the fire damage this ship takes. You have almost the most health in the game, second only to Kremlin, and that means you burn for a lot of damage every tick. And you have a gigantic superstructure that everybody's going to be aiming for, so reducing that to only one fire I think is crucial for this ship. So... Once you're angled though, you're pretty tanky, especially when there's a druid who can only shoot AP. We finally get our bow citadel through this Wooster. A big weakness, of course, is that Kerr First isn't the most consistent at doing that, but we do get it, but this game is over. Kerr First can't carry them all out, but it certainly is a good ship when it's in the right scenario. We just needed our team to stay alive just a little bit longer in this one, and you can see just how long we can stay alive here with so many people shooting us. When angled, the curve first is pretty tanky. So that is what I try to do to mitigate the weaknesses. Really, it's staying disciplined with your angling. That is the main thing, is staying disciplined, not getting greedy for your rear turrets. And I didn't do the best job in this game, but I did an all right job. Results in 203,000 damage, dev strike, first blood even double the XP of the next nearest person on my team. These games happen, guys, and uh, you're going to have to understand that you can't carry them out in a battleship as easily as something like a destroyer where you can impact the game a little bit better. 32,000 damage from our secondaries raw. You see most of our damage is from our main guns still. Secondaries still aren't 
outstripping the main guns here. Not at all. So with dealing with the weaknesses of the Kerr first, we saw how valuable steering gears can be. If you're trying to play on islands a little more, I think Propulsion Mod can help you with that kind of start-stop type of thing, pushing out from behind an island and then reversing back into it. I just don't like playing the Kerr first in that kind of way. You'll see me play Massachusetts like that a little bit, um, but when half your firepower is in the back, I tend to want to make use of that when, whereas Massachusetts only has a third in the back. So the other thing is damage control system mod two. I'm not really trying to reduce the duration of fires. And part of that comes down to my experience with being under constant pressure from an AG spammer. In my experience, it's very unlikely that when a fire goes out, another one isn't started right away. <laughs> I know maybe you think, oh, it's just RNG, but I really do think a lot of the fire starters, especially at the higher tiers, they're just going to light you up so quickly that reducing the time on each fire doesn't help too much unless you use your damage control too early. And you'll notice I oftentimes, I mean, outside of the end of this game, which was a little bit of a different scenario, but a lot of the times I'm trying to save my damage control until I get into a safe position, right? behind an island into some smoke screen where they can't shoot me or just getting out of somebody's range, right? I'm waiting until then to stop the fire on my ship. I'm not trying to rely on the fire going out early and the fire spammer not getting another fire. That is the thought process, at least in my head, in my head. but I do think an interesting thing Wargaming could do is instead of reducing the fire and flood recovery time, they could reduce the uh, tick rate of each flood and fire. I think that would be an interesting way to make these a little bit stronger to deal with those fires. They would still last the same duration, but they would do reduced damage throughout that duration. Maybe that would be an interesting way to change things. Still running concealment, you see how valuable at least how little bit of concealment is to help you get into those closer range scenarios. If you're finding you're having a difficult time with that, uh, with Legendary Mod with the only 19 kilometers of range. Definitely running Main Battery Mod 3 is really good. You get that 20.3 kilometers. Or if you're really struggling, I don't think Range Mod's a bad thing. I've said this before in a couple other videos. The game's in such a campy, long-range state that running Range Mod isn't the end of the world on most ships. And you shouldn't really feel bad for it at this point. Aiming Systems Mod 1. This is a really good upgrade. You saw the dispersion we get sometimes, it's very, very helpful. And the Hydro and the Auxiliary Armaments mod. Pretty standard stuff, I would say, for a Kerr first. And then on to the Commander, it's still the same one from last video. But again, we're looking to prevent the amount of fires on our superstructure. That's where people are looking to get the most damage out of us. It's very rare on a Kerr first, you get lit up on your bow or your stern. And that's just down to how big your ship is. And there's very little area people can hit on your bow and stern to actually deal damage. Those extra heals didn't really help us in this game, but some games they really do come in clutch, so I do think they're quite useful. But if you wanted that extra concealment, I could definitely see giving up Emergency Repair Expert and going for Concealment Expert. That little bit of extra concealment might help you push in a little easier to those islands before you get spotted. And that's my build. That's why I like the things that I do on this ship, I'm trying to mitigate the weaknesses of the Kerr first, of which there are many, but there are ways of dealing with them. You just have to sacrifice some of the other nice things to have. And this is not the be all end all build. I just think this hybrid build is very interesting and the one that I prefer to use at the moment. So thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for the last part where we talk about timing your pushes. I think that's the most valuable one to learn from. And that's why I saved it till the end, because we need this little bit of context of the strengths, the weaknesses, how we deal with those things, and how that plays into timing your push. So stick around for, I guess, tomorrow for that one. So thank you very much for watching, guys, and I hope you have a great day.